Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and build a simple backend project, which is a real time project and which uses WebSockets for communication. Just to give you an idea of how to get started by building some amazing backend projects. This is a follow on on one of the videos which we did a couple of days ago, that is five backend project ideas. So make sure you check that out before you get started. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So the first thing when you're building a project is to build a simple but you know complete version of that so to build a simple real-time app let's say a chat app I can go ahead and start working on code damn playgrounds just to prototype it a little bit before I finalize everything the backend design the stuff we need to build and so on I'm gonna go to codedam.com playgrounds my playgrounds and I'm gonna go ahead and create no not my playgrounds just the playgrounds over here I'm gonna go ahead and create a playground which could be this Node.js. Now remember that for backend WebSocket application, we need to have a backend and the frontend. So this Node.js template can help us do that. So I can say this is something like my WebSocket project, right? And I'm gonna create a playground for this. It's gonna boot up this interface within seconds, which will help us basically do all the work in the browser itself without actually downloading or setting up anything. You can see we have a simple Node.js app over here. I'm gonna start making some changes. We're not gonna be keeping this as a very simple app. So let's just go ahead and init the project first of all. So I'm just gonna use yarn init to create a package.json and I'm gonna say yarn add express because that is what we'll need for this project as a server to serve static websites. And looks like there is some issue with npm registry which should not be happening okay this probably is an npm fault because hmm interesting so npm registry is facing some problems i think but anyway because this is a cloud computer it should not have faced any problems but the fact it did that means that it was npm which was at fault so anyway we do have express installed with us and what i can do inside my cdmrc is change my terminal one and the run button command so i'm gonna remove run button command for now and i'm gonna change the terminal one command from node index.js to yarn install and or yarn install is also like you know overkill yarn is fine yarn and yarn dev in our package.json we can give it a script section and we can include a dev script which could be whatever we want right we'll write it later so once we have this with us you're gonna see that we can start using express so we already have access to this port and by the way if you don't know how code damp ports work you can go to the settings tab and see this port mapping section which is an advanced section which says that anything you start on port number 1337 this public port is port number 1337 in fact is mapped to the to the url which you got which is a publicly accessible internet URL of on HTTPS on port 1337 and 1338 similarly maps to port number 1338, right? So this is what we are doing internally in a way that you can start any HTTP service. You don't have to start an HTTPS service. You can start an HTTP service locally on port 1337 and it will reflect it on an HTTPS server, which is publicly accessible on port 1337 as well. And similar thing for 1338. Okay. Once we have this, let's just go ahead and include const express is require express const app is express. I can just say app dot get something with request response. And I can say console dot log hello from code right? And I can just say app dot listen on port and I can say server started on port port right and we can just move this port a little bit above all right so next thing i can do is i can start this with a node mon of index.js so that we don't have to restart it over and over again and in fact you should ideally install node mon as well i was able to just start node mon because this container fetches with node mon as a globally installed package but you should install it with yarn and probably in the dev script, you can just say node mon index.js as the script, right? Or package.js, whatever it is. Okay, and there is something definitely wrong with npm or the network infrastructure which we have at this, this compute unit. But it's probably npm because I have read a couple of 
tweets around that also so we'll see but anyway once we have that installed i can just say yarn dev and it will start our node mod server and if i refresh this you can see that okay we are doing a console log but we should idly also response start send hello from code dam okay give it a refresh and you can see we are starting to get hello from code dam just like we would get from a regular server okay so the next thing we have to do is use a websocket server because remember we were going to use a websocket server anyway for establishing real-time communication and this server will allow us this package would allow us to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open another terminal because another terminal would be handy i'm going to start writing yarn add ws now this websocket server allows us to create a specific you know server which can be used for real-time communication and over here the way we can make it work is just including let's say because we are using common js format still so i'm going to say websocket server is required ws right and then we will create a websocket server like this but with a lot of options gone right so we'll not probably use anything like this and for port remember that i told you that we have another port available on port dam where locally listening it to 1338 would automatically open it for listening to 1338 over here also so this websocket server now is listening right and the way we can create you know handlers for receiving and sending connections is using event listeners in node.js so you can say websocket server on connection this means whenever somebody some client connects to this this function would run we will send something or hello from server and then it console log we'll just console log what we received now this is all fun and good but we obviously do not have any front end so far for our app to work meaningfully right so what we can do is we can create or we can say something like using statics for express.js and what static means is that you can serve a bunch of static files from express.js so express can act as a static server also in a way so the way this would work is i can get rid of the handler for you know the root domain or the root path and i can say app.use express.static and then i can specify the path which would be let's say public right so now if we go ahead and create a public folder over here and if i specify an index.js or index.html file rather inside this you're gonna see type it out a little html html flows head head closed body body closed h1 hello world right so now you can see we are using app.use express static if i give it a refresh you can see we now see hello world why because express is using everything in this folder as a fallback for any static file and because for this application our front end is mostly static this is our websocket connection is what will take all the bandwidth therefore we can stick with something like this that should be fine right i can also create a script.js over here which would help us do all sorts of connections and everything so let me just code up a websocket ui or you know a chat ui real quick over here okay so here you can see i have done a basic ui work not very fancy just a place for showing you know chat box maybe we can make it 80 vh if not 50 and then it should probably occupy more of height and there we go now when i write something and hit enter there is a function which is defined in html which is called as run handler this function should run and to make browser logs visible in the code damn playground itself we can include another handy script this script is called as script src code damn web console and this script would start mirroring the console from the browser into your playground right the moment you include this it will start working now if i go to script.js or if i just write something and hit enter you can see that we get an error message that run handler is not defined and the page reloads so let's fix that so i'm gonna go ahead and define this run handler inside my script and the first thing i'm gonna do is prevent the form from submitting right and then i'm gonna say console log run handler ran right or whatever give it a quick refresh and enter something hit enter 
and it says me cannot read properties of undefined that is because we are not passing an event and this should be just event not dollar event and now when i hit enter you can see we get run handler ran and the page does not reload awesome so the next thing we have to do is pick up the message which is which the user has written and you can see like how we are thinking about every step logically so i can pick up this message by document dot get element by id dot value right and i can say or you know first of all i can just say field then i can say message is field dot value and then i can also say that i'm gonna set the value as blank for the field so that it resets when i press enter right now we have to broadcast this message or we have to send this message on the socket but you know if i do something like trying to send this message on socket and then the message we have problem that is we don't have a socket to send this message yet so if i enter you can see we get the correct message in the console but we want to send it on the socket so that it appears over here also so let's go ahead and try to establish the socket connection first so i'm going to say new web socket and that would be you know this whole url but the port number would be 1338 now because this url kind of changes on every run what we can do is we can say that hey i have document.location.hostname with myself which is the name of the document i'm on then i have you know the port number as 1338 so i can do something like this and then port number is 1338 right because we know that this is the place where the websocket is running and i can say websocket dot on open or you know i think this is on open is just like a function or you can use event listeners you can say add event listener open and then you can just say connection open something like this i can say function connection open i can say console dot log websocket connection established right give it a refresh we're going to see the browser console reloads and we see websocket connection established and even if i refresh this in a new tab and actually go to networks tab and actually go to let's say the filters and websocket you can see that we get a 101 which means that the connection has been established and we get a message from the server which says hello from server right all happening on the code damn stack you don't have to clone anything you don't have to set up anything on your systems this is all happening within your browser which is awesome now if i go back to the index.js file you can see this is what we are getting from the server right so first things first we will remove this message because this will corrupt our way of talking to the server the second thing is uh, we can just say instead of just a static message i can say json.stringify sender is let's say i don't know system for now and then message is connection established right this is the first message which every client would receive and on every single message which they receive they just you know we just console log it and do nothing else for that so now if i give it a refresh you're gonna see that the socket when it's establishing when it's complete is completes the establishment we get a sender system and message connection established as the thing so i can go ahead and do that set up another event listener on message connection or you know socket message or handle socket message something like that now this function over here include some data which would be useful for us so let's just do an e dot data first to see what socket says and over here when i refresh this now you're gonna see we get a websocket connection established first and then what socket says is the string of what the socket is saying right so the next thing we can do is just throw this all this processing in a try catch try catch error not for us and i can just say const the real message is json.parse e.data just doing this in try catch because it is possible that server might send some data which is not json parsable maybe due to a bug maybe i don't know like if you misconfigured something or you know you just want your server to send some binary data or something as well so this would obviously fail in that case and therefore we don't want to handle this message in this handler once we have the real message we can 
can extract out two properties from it the sender and the message right from our real message and then we can probably create another helper function like append to chat box and then i can just say sender and message right now this function over here append to chat box could be something like sender message and then i can say you know just create a row every time we get a message inside this div and start appending it so i can say something like const div is document dot create element div and the you know a dirty way of doing this is just sending div dot inner html to whatever i want a cleaner way would have been you know just just to construct nodes over and over again but we can just go with the dirty way in this case so i can just say div class as sender and i can just say the name of the sender over here and then div dot we can just continue over here and this is you know one of the classic mistakes if you have not observed yet is that this is super prone to cross-site scripting attacks right because we are using inner html very casually so if you're doing something like this either make sure that you sanitize this data very properly or just don't do it in this way at all i'll show you a safe way to do this i'm going to go ahead and create sender div document dot create element div again and i'm going to say sender div dot text content is sender now or whatever the user sends there is no way this is getting executed as html whereas in this case when we are setting inner html to this it is possible that a malicious user can send any sort of html and that will get rendered similarly <clears throat> we can do the same thing for message div document dot create element div and message div dot text content is also message right again because we are using text content this would prevent any sort of cross-site scripting attacks or anything like that finally we can say instead of inner html hack now i can say div dot append child sender div div dot append child message div and finally i can say that my chat box which is div id chat i can say document dot get element by id chat dot append child div itself right hopefully this makes sense let's just give it a refresh and let's just see what's happening if i enter okay you can already see system modification says connection established what we can do is we can just go ahead and give it a class as well so that it's easier to style in uh, css sender this could be message div dot class name as uh, let's say message and this could be div dot class name as message row right in css now we can say message row is display flex so this gets us in a straight line dot sender is let's say background black color white i'm just terrible with ui so don't mind margin right 10 pixel something like that dot message could be font size 14 or 15 pixel i don't know and you can also say this as flex shrink zero this is flex crew one okay once we have done these many changes give it a refresh you can see now we have system and the message as connection established if i enter something like hello world you can see we get trying to send this message on socket but we apparently do not obviously because the connection is not established yet so what we can do is we can say over here in run handler we can say that hey let websocket or you know we don't even need that what we can do is say if ws dot state ready state is websocket dot open only and only then we want to do all sorts of things like this otherwise we can just say console dot log still establishing connection or something like that right so we only try to send the message if the socket is connected in the first place and if it is then i can just say ws.send sender now this could be anything this could be my name this could be something i just choose as a username in the first place we can do something like const username is prompt again a silly way of choosing my what do you want your username to be something like that 
right or we can do local storage dot get item username or or this prompt right so what this does is that it tries to get the username first from the local storage itself otherwise it prompts me to be what i want the username to be otherwise it just sets it to anonymous and finally what we can do is set item username as username all right so this way we do, would not have to just enter our username again and again on every single reload and finally when i send this i can send my sender i can set my sender as the username and the message of course we already have that with us okay let's give it a refresh now and let's set our username to mehul hit enter i can just say hello world now hit enter it tries to send this message if i go to terminal you can see i get received object object so let's try to debug that i'm going to say this is e and i can say e dot data you know something like this let's try to do this again hello world hit enter okay we did not receive anything so let's just try to console log just e for now hello hit enter and we have got a buffer right so what we want to do is you want to convert this buffer into a string first of all right so i can say something like buffer dot from e dot to string or you can just use i think you can just say e dot to string as well it should just work it should just work fine give it a refresh write a message hello hit enter and we got an object object okay not like this so let's just give it a buffer dot from e and then to string const message and then received is our message right refresh hello enter okay so we are still receiving object object that probably means that we are doing something wrong over here yes we have to json.stringify this otherwise it will send it as an object object which is what we were receiving on the other end so now if i hit enter hit hello you can see we get the correct object now sender dot sender is mayhole and message is hello i can go back and i can take a look at what all things we can extract out of this so we have our message and we have our consoles so let's just fix the indentation a little bit while we introduce support for prettier in code and playgrounds so i have again the sender and the message from let's say this is raw message and this is raw message now what i can do is i can try and broadcast this message to all the connected clients right so if you go back here you can see over here client tracking i guess this server over here includes the support for tracking the clients the connected clients and i'm forgetting the documentation part but let's just see okay so you can see over here we have a client tracking option so if i enable this it will automatically track all the connected clients so i can just say something like server.clients you can see it's a set which just stores all the connected clients so i can start saying that server.clients or you know in this case just wss.clients if i console log this you will see that this is in fact a set of connected clients for us give it a refresh hello enter and you can see that we have this object which is a set right okay once we have the clients with us what i can do is say for const client of all the clients which we have i want to say client dot send json.stringify sender and message right because that is what we are sending in the initial boot also and when we receive our message we also broadcast it to all the connected clients for us and i can remove this console statement for now all right now give it a refresh over here connection established if i say hello world hit enter you can see that we did not get anything in fact let's just debug this in the networks tab also switching to websocket saying hello world hitting enter we get a sender message sender mail message hello world but we receive an empty object all right let's just console log what we are getting in the raw message okay i understood now because we are not 
we are not json not parsing this bad boy over here and similarly just like we did on the front end it's even more important for the back end because we don't want don't crash the server you know we don't want the server to crash on this message and it is equally important for this thing also if client dot ready state is equal to you know websocket websocket dot open only and only then we want to send this message otherwise we don't want to touch this right give it a refresh say the hello hit enter and you can see that we now get our nice message hello let's just open this app in a new tab or in incognito hit enter and it's going to ask me for my username let's say this is john now and if i enter hello mehul hit enter i get hello mehul here and over here as well and i can just say hello john what's good hit enter and John also gets this message. So this is how a very basic app can be built with, you know, just WebSockets and Node.js and a very simple front end and very simple JavaScript. And you can see it still took a, us a lot of time to build this foundation, but that's that's basically it. On now, on top of this, you can customize the UI a lot. You can make sure that the messages which are, you know, from the same user are displayed in a different way. You can do that. So I can give you some assignments. I can give you some things which you could do. So I can say a to-do list of things. First thing is customizing own messages second is obviously customizing the full ui of the chat the third way is storing the messages on backend in a room so instead of you know me just reloading and jumping in a single room you should have the ability just like we have the ability to choose a username you should have the ability to choose a room and then storing messages on the backend in the room so if anyone joins that particular room, the messages are restored, right? Fourth is then finally thinking about how you can make it scalable, right? Now this one would be interesting because I can just give you a quick direction on where to go in this case. And that would be, you know, just choosing something like API gateway on Amazon plus WebSocket layer plus using Redis or, you know, Elasti cache for managing all the state plus using all the temporary state I should rather say plus using Dynamo DB or Mongo DB or MySQL or any sort of database for managing full permanent state like chat now this fourth point is obviously very tough to implement because you know things working on scale are vastly different than just working in a simple environment like this but you get the idea right so there's that and uh, yeah i mean this is like a very basic server right here we are not handling errors we are not handling disconnections you can also have something like ws dot on disconnect or you know on close or disconnect you can broadcast to everyone that someone has left the chat right so you can store, you can basically, in the initial message itself, you can bring the user's username um, when the connection establishes. So you can say here, hey, ws.send my user and, you know, something, something like that. And then you can store that username over here. So the server is also aware about what the user is instead of who the user is, instead of just manually, you know, just, just including the sender every single time. Which brings me to another thing which you can do is set up a authenticated chat with the registration and login and uh, you know just having more of system generated messages just like i said connection established user joined user left number of people online and so on so except for this fourth point which you probably should do later down the line anyway what you can do is complete these five as an assignment in this whole in the source code itself i'm going to be pasting this link so that you can copy paste the source code and you can download this from over here as well if you want to download the playground you can download the full playground like this i'm going to be pasting this over here so you can try it out right within your browser and uh, yeah you can fork this playground when you will open this link you will see a button to fork this playground you can fork this playground on your own accounts and you can start working 
like that but yep that's pretty much it for this video this video tutorial hopefully this is helpful you understood something new you created a fully backend project without leaving your browser which is pretty awesome if you ask me it's just you working in the browser all the way and yep that's all for this one if you like this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching